Rob Flax here. I play things with strings, I hit stuff, and I sing. And today it's time for a very special episode of Fuzz Fiddle with Flax. <laughs> Those of you who have been following my channel know that I love fuzz. I love the different kinds of flavors and textures you can get out of a fuzz pedal to transform an acoustic violin into a different kind of expressive beast altogether. So for years, I've been trying to sculpt my bass tone and pair that with fuzzes that give me a lot of options. Some of you may have noticed I'm also a huge fan of Chase Bliss Audio. In most of my previous videos, even though I'm going into a preamp already, the Audio Sprockets Tone Dexter, I've been using the Chase Bliss Condor to add some additional EQ and sculpting. It's really awesome. I've been a huge fan of it. I'm not using, it's not on the pedal board anymore. I took it off. Da 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 da. The Chase Bliss Audio and Benson Amps collaboration, the Automaton Preamp Mark II. It's called an automaton because <laughs> the faders, they jump when you tell them to. They'll move automatically. You can control them by expression or MIDI. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this thing. Just even playing with faders alone is very satisfying. Disclaimer, I am a Chase Bliss artist. I have an artist relationship with Chase Bliss Audio. They do give me a discount on their stuff, but I don't always buy it at the artist rate. For example, the blooper, I bought full price to back the Kickstarter. I'm also just a big fanboy. Joel is responsible for my love of pedals in a big way. And for years, as I said, this is actually the very first Chase Bliss pedal I ever bought. All of the functionality and features of this, almost nearly entirely, are crammed inside of the Benson Preamp Mark II. And it's a fuzz. First, let's have a listen to how it makes my pickup sound. Pretty sweet, right? It's a really nice sounding EQ. The way I have it set right now in my clean channel, which is my preset number five, as you can see there by the bright LED number five. Nice. You can actually see from the fader position what exactly it is that I'm doing. So this is my sort of bass clean violin sound, and it just makes it sound a little bit better. I'm sculpting the sound by removing some of the low mids. So I have the frequency slider way down, and then I have the mid slider set to a lower frequency position. Trebles just a little bit over halfway. I've got the bass cranked, which doesn't really change the sound of the pickup that much. Have a listen. <laughs> It's not really doing a ton to the acoustic instrument sound, and set this way, it gives it a nice rounded, just a little bit of extra warmth. The low mids control is sculpting out some of the things that are undesirable, but this one is giving it a little zazz, a little je ne sais quoi. Great tools there. That uh, parametric mids control is literally the exact same circuit as the Chase Bliss Condor. So it's the Benson preamp, which usually just had a uh, bass and treble, and then a gain in volume, plus 
two more sliders borrowed from the Condor. It's a nice marriage. I like it a lot. My other preset that I go back and forth between is preset six. And when I press the jump button or the uh, preset button, it'll, it'll jump to that. Notice all of the letters and dials and things that have changed. I have a lot of reds. I've engaged some germanium clipping diodes. I tried this out versus the silicon, and I think I slightly prefer germanium. I have this little red number dealy, which is pre-post, which means that now my mids control is after the amplifier circuit, and I'm, again, well, actually here I'm boosting a little bit of low mid, so it's sort of the opposite flavor. If my setting number five had some cut for the mids, this one boosts it a little bit. Let me turn that on so you can hear it, and I'll mute the room mic again. <laughs> Gets a lot louder, too. But maybe I could uh, turn down the volume. Nice. Okay, let me room mute the room mics. Now, interestingly enough, the gain slider is way low at the moment. So the thing that's really pushing those diodes into clipping is the bass boost. If I turn the bass down, let me just turn that down. Now you hear it behaves a little differently. It still has a little bit of a crunch and bite to it, but it's not that much. If I take the gain and bring it up higher and higher, Say by bringing the volume way down. And if I ever want to reset, I just tap it twice. You'll notice that I'm jumping back and forth between five and six because I have preset six set with a jump parameter engaged. Every time you advance to the next one, instead of advancing, it will jump to wherever jump is set. Right now, jump is set to five. So I'm going back and forth between five and six. I do have other parameters saved in other places. For example, let me jump to, let me jump to zero and I'll just play through all of what I have. Once it gets back to five and six, it should go back to its regular old loop between those two sounds. I like them a lot. Well, let's hear what the first five sound like too. This is preset zero. I have the volume all the way up, the treble and bass all the way up, the gain all the way down, and the condors mids thing not doing anything. This is sort of my uh, neutral. Thank you. 
and then we're back to five. Now, there's more after that, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we get all the way into the other two banks, which you can access by pressing and holding the preset button. You'll see these lights light up. Now I'm in bank one. Now I'm in bank two, where I haven't had much stuff to build yet. And back to bank zero. Yeah, we're programmers starting at zero. All of this is really cool, and frankly, if it just was a really nice sounding preamp, every electric violinist agrees you really want a preamp to go with your pickup. It's going to be an everything better situation, and after that, you can go into all kinds of stuff. But that's not why we're here. This is fuzz fiddle with flax. Let's hear the fuzz on this thing. There are two different ways to use the fuzz, and that's the arcade button on the far right here that says fuzz. Nice. You can either use it as a wide open fuzz, or you can use it as a gated fuzz, and then follow that with a clipping diode or not, the mid circuit or not, and so on and so forth. First, let's just set it here in neutral and turn on the wide open fuzz and see what that does to the sound. I'm going to mute the mic. The other setting is gated fuzz, which, as you may know, I love, especially when playing with an acoustic instrument. Gating means that the feedback loop is more tameable. Let's hear that now. So right away this thing is just bonkers, even with just those two options of wide open or gated. Let's go back to the open fuzz now, but this time I'm going to try it with some other EQ settings. Let me jump to a higher up preset that I've been saving till this moment. So here's my preset 7. Heavy, saturated, almost sounds like a bumblebee or something just kind of over the top. It reminds me a little bit of the Kuvave fuzz when it gets so full of unsaturated that that bass knob being up so high is definitely giving it a bit more of a burly, wooly sort of fat <laughs> sound. <laughs> I like it. Here comes preset eight. Check this one out. This one also wide open fuzz, but look how I've set the EQ and everything very differently.
piece at nine is mighty fun. Check this sound out. So something that might become apparent as I'm playing through this, there's a lot of dynamics and touch sensitivity to this fuzz, even as it's slammed to the wall thing is happening. It sounds really balanced and smooth. If I lower the input gain from my preamp, yes, this fuzz does do the cleanup thing too. Yes, it does that too. It pretty much does everything. Okay, one more sound. Let's go to another bank. Let's see here, what do I have? This one's nice. I kind of set up the middle bank to be better sounds with my octave instrument, my chin cello, but let's hear them with this right now anyway. Pretty dramatically darker. Sounds good with a bow. Preset two, this one's gated. <laughs> Red and all blue, kind of fun. Chinchello. First, the bypass pickup, then the sound of this zero setting. with a little bit of volume rolled off.
Honestly, the thing is so fun, I could just play it for forever. Awesome. So what a very versatile fuzz this is. And frankly, you're going to be hearing this on everything from now on, because even if I'm not using the fuzz part of it, and I certainly will be, there's so many usable tones here and I've barely scratched the surface, I'm definitely going to be using the EQ shaping on it. Now you know, this is the most expensive fuzz pedal I've ever purchased, even with the artist discount, which, thank you, Joel. You're a hero. I appreciate you. It's still a really expensive pedal, and it might not be for you. Now, I'm using this to replace the Condor, a Tone Dexter, the King of Tone Overdrive pedal, and it's probably doing the job as a fuzz of maybe two or three other pedals that I have already, especially when you consider the ways you can EQ and change the shape afterwards and how much it changes depending on what you're putting into it and how much input signal it gets. Really versatile fuzz. I like it a lot. So that's all for this one. Thank you, as always, for watching. If you enjoyed this and would like to watch more episodes of Fuzz Fiddle with Flax, click here. There's going to be some recommended ones popping up pretty soon. And thank you to my patrons on Patreon. All of the music that you've heard in the background is using the Automaton Benson Preamp Mark II. So if you enjoy that and want to go have a download or listen to it just on its own, you can go check that out on my Patreon page. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.